So this problem is about translation again. Um, it also has a reflection in it. So part one uh, gives us this function, f of x equals 3 to the x. It appears at the top of my list, and it's graphed uh, in, I want to get rid of the keyboard, there we go, and graphed in the image, uh, in the Cartesian coordinate system to the right of the screen there. Um, so that's y equals 3 to the x. It is our parent function, mom and dad parent function. And then they give us three parts, a, b, and c. Uh, strangely enough, they have part A, part A, and part A because somebody in uh, somebody who wrote the problem in my open math um, didn't index correctly. But anyway, that's fine. Doesn't matter. It's not important. Um, the first one they ask you what the function rewrite the function if it was reflecting f of x about the y-axis. And so we're going to do that one last. We're going to do the other two first because we, I have a subsequent video or a previous video, depending on what order you're watching them, that addresses the translation issue. So the second part of the question says, what if I shift f of x nine units to the right? And if you watch that other video, then hopefully you realize or, rec or recognize that that's really changing my h to nine. And so if I slide this to the right nine, this h value, then the uh, function just below this red one, red dot one, the y equals a times three to the b times the quantity h minus, excuse me, x minus h, and then plus k. That is my full, fully capable um, transformation version of y equals three to the x. And if I turn that on, that's blue. That function is now translated to the right nine units. How can I tell? Well, it goes through the point 0, 1, this point right there, 0, 1 in the parent function. And if I translate that point to the right 9 units, I would add 9 to my x value. And I sh the function, if translated to the right, should look exactly the same, except go through the point 0 plus 9, 9, comma 1. And the blue one goes through the point 9, comma 1. And shape-wise, it looks exactly the same. Uh, I can also, with Desmos, play around and hopefully learn from playing around with Desmos. I can drag this point and move it back and forth like this, and you can see that it is, in fact, the same function when h is equal to 0, which means that I'm not translating in any units to the right or to the left. But again, I can translate back and forth, and if I set this at 9, my function would look like that. And how would I write that in the answer? It would be y equals a is 1, so I wouldn't write anything there. b is 1, so I wouldn't write anything. h is 9, and k, if you look down here, second from the bottom, k is equal to 0, because I'm not adding anything to cause a shifting up and down 9 units. Okay? So now I'm going to take h, h, h. I'm going to take h and set it back to 0, because the third part is not asking for any kind of horizontal translation. They're asking for a translation up nine units. And so that means I'm going to shift, I'm going to change k to the value nine, and it's going to shift my blue curve up nine units. If I'm shifting k up nine, or changing k to nine, and thus shifting my function up nine units, instead of going through the point zero comma one, I'm going to add nine to the y value, and it will now go through the point 0, 1 plus 9, 0, 10. And you can see instead of 0, 1, I'm going to be going through the point 0, 10. And again, k, is a, k exacts a vertical shift. And it looks like it's unrolling to me, but that's just uh, the nature of the way the curve looks. It's that smooth, but um, it's it's sliding. Technically, it's sliding. Okay. Now I'm going to reset k back to zero, and we could talk about this reflection. Uh, most students are super comfortable um, after some experience with this regarding reflections about the x-axis, meaning it flips vertically, and that's exacted by changing the a to a negative number. So I'm going to change it to a negative 1 so that all I'm doing is changing the, the reflection, not the shape. 
if I change it to anything other than negative 1, it's going to change the shape of the function. As you saw when I was dragging it, it was flattening out and flipping down and around. So as we've said in class, effectively what you're doing is you're doing everything to the function, the 3, the b, the x, and the minus h, doing all that same stuff and getting your outputs of y. So meaning you have the graph, the red graph that's there. And it's done before k happens. But in this case, k is 0, so it doesn't matter. And thus, when I take a, a negative 1, and multiply it times all of those y values along the red curve, those y values are all positive. But if I multiply them times negative 1, their values won't change, because I'm multiplying times 1, with the exception of those values will become negative. So all the y values become negative the same values, and so that they're graphed down below meaning that all those values are negative, okay? So most students get comfortable with that. And so I'm not going to change A back to a positive one. And we're going to talk about the B value. So right now H is equal to 0, A is equal to 1, K is equal to 0, and B is equal to 1. So my graph looks, my blue graph, looks exactly like the red one, the parent function. Now watch when I change the blue, excuse me, change the blue one by changing B value to a negative 1. In the same way, if I take a negative 1 and multiply it times the X value before I do anything else to the X value, I've effectively changed, for instance, if my input of X was 3, I immediately change it to negative 3 before I do anything else. And so whatever my 3 would have been, it will now be negative 3. And so everything gets flipped or reflected about the y-axis. Everything on the right-hand side is now on the left-hand side. Everything on the left-hand side is now on the right-hand side. So that's why it looks like the red switched over to the left up, up top to the blue and over to the left where it's close to the x-axis all those negative x's get flipped over and become positive x's. So I reflect about the y-axis. The same thing would happen to a parabola, but you can't see that happening with a parabola because it's symmetrical about the um, y-axis. So you wouldn't see anything. So in other words, if I turn this on, it won't look any different than its parent function. So hopefully that's helpful.